Hello and welcome to another Wolf Time Gaming video. Today I'm going to be painting up two models from Hassle Free Miniatures that I picked up recently. I'm going to be using both of them in my Frostgrave Warband, one as the Wizard and one as the Apprentice. You'll probably recognise these models, I think they've had a little bit of inspiration from a certain Disney film and I am going to paint them up that way as well. Before we get started though, let's get that kettle on. So as usual the first step is to base and I use a fine sand in this instance with a few little rocks just to, to add a little bit of interest and then gave the whole model or both of the models a base coat of Wraith Bone which is a spray from Games Workshop to use with the contrast paints and that's what essentially I'm going to be using. First step though before we get onto that is the actual face and eyes. Uh, the first stop, the thing I do is use uh, Corvus Black just to draw a line from essentially the, the area of the nose out to the edge of the eye to create a sort of line um, that I'm going to be painting the uh, the eyeball in essentially which is now what I'm doing with a little bit of white scar exactly the same process just to touch the uh, centre of the eye uh, or centre of the face towards the nose and pull sideways towards the edge of the face and that essentially creates a black line with a white line inside it. The um, Iris itself is just done with a, a black dot in the in the middle of each eye, or in a direction where the head is facing to imply that they're they're looking in that direction. If if you get my meaning, um, and that that I think works quite well. I don't think you need to do anything else at this sort of a scale because you don't really see it anyway. The next colour I've used is a contrast paint, Gullum and Flesh. The first contrast paint I'm using in in this instance. Um, and we're starting off um, with the Arna style figure and just take your time with this one put it on really really um, thinly don't go too mad with it at all because essentially if you, I know it's uh, they say one thick coat with these uh, contrast paints but if you go too thick especially with a, um, a skin pigment it's very difficult to get that back without using a normal sort of base coat or anything uh, if you do think you've gone a little bit too thick just go over the top of it though but you can see how thin I'm going on, on here and it looks really good and it looks really smooth when it actually goes on to the, the skin I really do like this uh, Gollum and Flesh colour I think it's a, it's a, it's a nice colour for any sort of um, skin so the next paint I'm using is a um, Temple Guard Blue and I'm using this on the, the shirt essentially. What I'll do, I'll go through Arna's painting first and then we'll move on to the, the Elsa lookalike um, painting. But uh, I've just used a, a few reference images for um, to actually find these colours and I do notice in many of them from the original film that she, she has like this light blue undershirt essentially. And I've done that with, as I say, Temple Guard Blue. Next stage is to do the inside of her cloak and again on, on a few images I've seen that it's a red in, inside of the cloak and pink on the outside and all I've done is use the contrast Blood Angels red just to take my time and do the, the inside of that cloak. I also picked out a little detail just on her sword as well just as a little bit of interest and also the, the handle of the sword where she'd actually hold as well uh, just to add an extra bit of colour in there. I did use Baharoth Blue as well, which is a, another uh, base, uh, sorry, a, an edge paint uh, from Games Workshop. And just to pick out some of the edges, mainly around the elbows, just on this model as well, just to, to add a little bit of a highlight, really, because it is a, a very um, block of, a big block of colour, because I haven't used any of the contrast on, in this instance. The black area on her sort of bodice that she's wearing is done with... Um, Another contrast paint, which is Black Templar. Just taking my time around this one just to, to cover the, the, the whole of this sort of bodice area. Uh, again, on the reference images I've seen, she's, she's got quite a dark one. It does have a gold trim, but on this scale, I'm not going to do the gold trim. I'm just purely going to go for the black, uh, just for ease of painting, really. And just to, I think it looks quite effective without having to go into that much detail. The belt and everything was done with a contrast wildwood um, to just uh, put it on quite thickly in this instance just so it picks it seeps down into all the uh, recesses on the belts uh, and looks quite nice. I also did this scabbard uh, for the sword in the same 
uh, with the same exactly the same paint but I went on with two coats with this just to darken it down a little bit more in comparison to the belt so it looks a little bit different now on moving back onto the cloak uh, we are used or started with screamer pink as a base coat for the actual cloak itself um, I think it's quite a nice base coat I've had this paint around kicking around for a while I usually use it on swords and things for the handles um, uh, just uh, because it's a different sort of a colour I don't generally use it for, for much else it's more for, for sort of rich looking um, soldiers and things on their swords and stuff but I did see on the on a lot of the reference images I use that it's pink cloak and this would work quite well and I've highlighted that with pink horror as well which is a layer paint from Games Workshop and I've just gone, gone along that almost as a, a dry brush st sort of style I don't really like wet blending it, it's not sort of for me so I've gone with more of a a dry brush and and uh, just picking out the edges and the, the raised areas with the side of my brush to just to highlight it a little bit more uh, and make it make a few of those areas stand out quite nicely moving on to the skirt the skirt was started with macaridge blue I've had this macaridge blue kicking around on my painting shelf for ages I never really use it because who wants to paint ultramarines I certainly don't um, so I don't really use it very often um, but it was a perfect color to start with the uh, with the skirt uh, in this instance and it, it looks really really good it's almost matches it really like the um, screen photos I've seen perfectly um, I, I then went on to highlight the the areas of the um, the skirt itself firstly with Calgar blue uh, just to bring out a little bit uh, a little bit of the color and I also added really 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 finely just on the edges a little bit of Fenrisian and gray as well just to really uh, really highlight that nicely So she's, she's already looking pretty good. But now to add a little bit of detail, I've just used a little bit of lead belcher paint, which is sort of my go-to for all silver uh, areas on any, any of the models that I paint, because uh, I really like the effect that lead belcher gives when you put a little bit of Nornol on there. And all I've done is pick out a few of the details around the sword, uh, a little bit on the scabbard and the, the edge of the sword, and also the, she's got a, a buckle just on the belt, and uh, there's a uh, like a, a brooch type thing holding a, a cloak together. It was then onto the hair and I used Jacaro Orange, you may have seen me use this in the past to try and get a red head, um, with sp specifically with my dwarfs I've gone down this route with a, with a lot of those and it's, it's quite a nice, uh, a nice paint to start with, um, you can add a little bit of Troll Slayer Orange if you wanted it to after to make it even brighter but I really didn't want it too bright in this instance, it's got quite a, a dull um, red head essentially. And I've then gone over the top of that with a Reichland Flesh Shade as well, just to shade the areas of the hair. And it drops into the recesses really nicely, you can see the effect it's giving straight away, um, and I think it looks really good. I did concentrate around the edges of the hair on, on the face as well, just to try and make them stand out against the, the flesh as well, just to give it that little bit more of a pop uh, with the hair really. Uh, and then I moved on to Null Null, as I previously said, mainly around the um, lead belcher areas just to, to darken those down. But I also picked out a few of the little areas just around the model as well, specifically the inside of the, the elbow and stuff on the shirt because I thought the, the colour just blended a little bit too much. Moving on to the, the Elsa style model now, uh, first thing uh, I painted, obviously apart from the skin because we already covered that, is the, is the dress. And it was to give the base coat of the dress really. And I first started with uh, Sotec. Um, Sotec Green uh, that I've had kicking around for quite a long time now because it's a paint that I used a lot with my Lizardmen army, my Seraphon army um, as a base colour for those and I thought it was quite a nice colour to start with with this one specifically around the bottom of the dress because her dress when looking at any of the um, reference photos goes from like a light sort of colour at the top to dark at the bottom and I thought it was an ideal colour to start with I then went over the top of that with Temple Guard Blue, breaking that out again. It's very similar uh, colour, or the same colour, obviously, I've used on the Arnas style model that, I, that I've painted as well, just on her shirt. So they, they, they're sort of the same sort of colour and they give the same sort of an effect. And I'm, I concentrated around the top of this with only uh, touching a little bit on the bottom because, as I said, I wanted it to blend uh, nicely down uh, to the bottom. I then highlighted that even more with Baharoth Blue, uh, but I only really dry brushed this on. I didn't go go crazy with this one because I thought it was a little bit too bright um, for, for the actual dress. And I really only concentrated on the top half of the body with a little bit around the, the, the top of the legs as well. Didn't go to the bottom at all, so it, did, it does essentially go from a light colour to a dark colour. The um, the shawl sort of thing that she's wearing, her cloak that she's wearing, I went with a blue colour. I couldn't really get a decent blue that I wanted with this, so I used Cal a little bit of Calgar blue and Femrisian 
grey, probably about 50-50, uh, to mix my own sort of colour paint because I just didn't have the correct colour or what I thought was the correct colour um, to go onto the actual cloak. And I think it really gave a really good effect. It was a really nice blue that went with almost a sky sort of a colour blue, which is uh, perfect for the, the reference images I've seen. So it's then on to the uh, staff itself and the I didn't really know what to do with this one so I ended up going for like a silver and white. Um, the silver areas was again done with lead belcher exactly the same way as I did the Arna style model. Just concentrated around the bottom of the staff and the, and the top. Uh, so essentially you've got a spike on the top of the staff or, the, or what is the bottom but the top when you're looking at the model and there, there's like a, a strange sort of maybe a dragon head or something similar at the bottom. So the hair was done with uh, starting with a Zandri dust. Um, it's a quite a nice paint to actually to go with a uh, blonde, but I really didn't think that it worked well enough for, for and it was light enough. So I then went over the top of that with uh, a Shabti bone as well, um, because it, I wanted a really bright sort of a blonde colour, um, where the Zandri dust um, with a shade just w wasn't going to work, or I didn't think it'd work at the time. Which is why I went to with the Ashabti bone as well, and I think that that's pretty pretty good for for the the, the colour that I wanted to go for. So then uh, it's actually shading the hair as well. So I went with the um, Reichland flesh shade again, which is the same colour I actually shaded the Arna style model. Um, just so we, we were using the same sort of paints. It did darken it down a little bit too much, so I went back over the top and um, highlighted a few of the areas with a shabty bone, but I think it worked quite well in the end. Basing the models, I based them both exactly the same. Starting with the rocks, I used uh, the Black Templar uh, contrast paint, um, purely because it stops me having to highlight. I could have highlighted a little bit more with a lighter grey just to really pick out the detail or, or the lighter areas of the rock, but you don't really need to, and I didn't in this instance. The soil was done with Rhinox Hide. If you've ever watched any of my videos where I've painted miniatures before, it always seems to be the paint that I start with because it gives you a really deep uh, brown, sort of a muddy colour to actually start. And then you can highlight afterwards and bring that colour back up, which is what I came on to now. And I, I, I used a scorched brown just around the, the actual soil just to highlight those areas. And you can see already uh, straight off the bat, um, you're getting quite a, a nice highlight on all those raised areas of the actual bases. Uh, but obviously it's, it's personal preference with bases dependent on how you want them to look and what you're setting you're actually putting them into. The uh, edges of the bases are, are painted with Corvus Black. This is my sort of go-to really for the bases. You do need to do, use a couple of coats because Corvus Black is very thin so it definitely needs two coats. But it frames the model really, really nicely. Basic material wise then to, to just go over the top of the, the gravel I used a little bit of um, super glue and stuck a bit of a um, clump foliage down, put a little bit of PVA around that as well and I did a little bit of static grass and also some flock that I had kicking around. All very sort of um, summery colours, I know it's a little bit different for frost grey but there you have it, I'm really really pleased with how these models look, I think they look absolutely fantastic. They're not perfect, they're not dead on accurate what I wanted to go for, but they're ideal to get on the tabletop and get the games in really, really quickly. I think they look brilliant. I think they've, they, I don't think I could have done better with what I've had, um, and I'm really pleased with how they actually turn out. Something very different to, to get my, uh, my teeth stuck into with this one. Well, thanks for watching guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button to see any more videos, I've got loads coming up including lots of Star Wars bits and pieces I've got planned, um, make sure you check out the other videos on the channel as well, but thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.